two topics. One is the uh, kind of annual update on the junior hunt, the band, and the end of this year, and the current year, to put things in perspective. And also to discuss the information that we've been collecting and our concern about, in particular, the Eastern Persian County you know, deer herd and Area 15 deer herd, deer herd in relation to our antlerless forest. So on the screen right now is the uh, trend of the junior hunt demand. So 2012, we uh, we did get uh, the information as we did this year what the actual first uh, first draw applicants were for the 1107 hunt. And at the end of the day, our quota uh, reflected the first draw applicants. Pretty much, 3,600, At the end of the day, last fall, after the first draw, the second draw, and the first come first serve sales of junior tags. We only sold a little over 3,200. So we have approximately 400 tags left on the table, primarily in uh, places like Area 10, and 17, So, uh, so that was last year. And uh, this year, we did have uh, 100 more junior applicants, a little over 3,700. We recommended 35, 35, 35 tags. Somewhat in the middle, if you will. So, we just need to, uh, one thing we don't know is the selectivity we certainly have trends of selectivity of these, these hunters. Uh, there's just some unit groups that just are not going to want to go into, even if there's leftover tags. Uh, other than 2011, where uh, I was somewhat asleep at the wheel and was not uh, paying attention to the huge increase or, or not asking assistant consultants that value. That was really the only year that we sold every tag that we made that we offered in the region of our in the So we had 2,800 and we sold every last one of them. But based on all the other years uh, and knowing what that value is right, right here today, uh, that's, that's your decision is do you make more available than what will be sold? Um, and spread the wealth in some of the smaller unit groups where there's high demand and you just can't, can't issue enough tags. Um, the other bit of information is last year we, you know, we had a tremendous number of tags statewide. Some of our big unit groups like 6, 7, and 10 had uh, huge increases in tags. And so because their ability to support um, you know, an extra four to 500 junior tags just goes to unit groups alone, the percent of each deer herd's 
harvested bucks that we were looking to see occur was only 19%. So we carved away, except for the inner groups that were undersubscribed, we carved away 19% of every reported buck kill in every deer herd right off the top in those ones of the juniors. This year, because we, we hit a lot of our buck ratios and some of our big units, and our fawn ratios were down from 2011 to 12. Uh, we, don't, we didn't have the recruitment we had two years ago. Some of those big units, six, seven, and 10, have anywhere from 20 to 40% reductions in the overall reported buck kill that we're shooting for, that, that we were expecting, based on our quota recommendations. So we have to lean on all the other unit groups harder. And so even to get 3,500 junior tags, that equated to taking 25% of every deer herd's reported buck kill and giving that to the juniors. I just want to let you know what, what percent um, the 3,500 came from. Um, we do have some alternative recommendations to, to that. And um, got some ideas there, but I just wanted to set that so you know kind of the numbers of how we got to 3,500. Do you want to answer those questions now? Or? <coughs> My question, it says uh, a plug on the second left over the tag is 397 of those. That was after the first draw. That No, that was after all draws. After that all was draws across it? All draws. This, this line here is first draw, second draw, and over the counter. Um, initially, we only sold. Last year, the first draw, 2,900, uh, almost 3,000. So we sold another over 200 tags in the second and first time we served. Any other commissioner? Might as well, uh, get, since we're talking about deer, might as well get the general mule deer uh, topic out of the way, um, since it's going to impact all the different uh, hunts. Kind of like the deal. Um, so I want to bring into this at this point a few of the uh, comments we've had from some of the public, some of the communications we've had, which you probably uh, listen to, and I've had quite a few. I know in the past uh, years we've had discussions with the commission and about uh, you know maybe people are talking to different people. Well, I know we all got several communications from the same people, so at least. This time I'll read some, a couple of those. There's several, but I'll read a couple that seem to be representative. I'll just kind of keep the same ones I have before here. This one from uh, Joel McConnell. You wrote, and I say it before, it starts out talking about uh, 100 of all Nevada most of his life, uh, native Nevada. Um, in the past, I believe the Board of Wildlife Commissioners has worked hard to maintain a balance between quality and quantity of big game hunts. and has not pushed one over the other. Changed in 2012, the large increase in mule deer tax issue. To my opinion, the quality of mule deer hunts is dramatically reduced by the increase in tags. Um, attended the Elko County Wildlife Advisory Board meeting, 2012, Biology explained tag increase one time event, and the quotas would be cut back to levels of 2011 after the 2012 season. Justification was about the duration of the target. All the pros, 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 2013 and it was reduced some, still well above levels 2011. Um, and there's a corresponding email. Let me say these are uh, generic mule deer, but before we get into any of the mule deer, they are applicable to all different uh, mule deer quotas. We had another one from that I'm pretty certain that everybody got from. Henry Cranka, who is a the head of the Guiding Association, I believe still, fourth generation, very concerned about biologists' quotas for mule deer and elk. Oh, I talked about the elk. Master Guide, or Lake Outfitters, 
eight quotes from yield years should be comparable. 2010 11 quotas say so the mule, number of yield year has an increased recommended doe hunt on behalf of what I was proposing. It's part of build and improve a deer herd when you deplete the breeding stock. Um, there is a little bit more after that, but that is the uh, meat of the issue. And I believe all of us did get these emails as well as several others, all of them all roughly along the same lines from different hunters. And I did see a reasonable amount of that, actually quite a lot of that, expressed in some of the uh, write-ups from the calves. And we'll be hearing uh, from the calves today about that. Um, also, on the general deer um, deal, I think we need to really watch even in the juniors with just tossing out extra quotas in particular in particular groups without due consideration. And I believe that in the last couple of years, last year specifically, it was very much did not have due consideration due to the uh, up to the effects that would have. And it did have very detrimental effects on the quality of the hunt leg that is demonstrated by the information that was brought to us in several method, methods um, was demonstrated, and that would be in the big game stats book we all got. If anybody cares to refer to chart A4, that chart, table two there, talks about the last 10 years worth of four pointer better. And when you go to that, well, you know, there's lots of numbers there. Well, 2012, if you look at it, out of the 41 unit groupings, Nine of them were the lowest percentage of four points or better in all 10 years. Nine out of the 41. So about a quarter of our units had the lowest four point or better that we'd seen in the last 10 years. Two of them tied the lowest and five others were the second lowest. It's significant. Last year, with very was very well demonstrated here that it was bad as far as four points or better. Harvest, so so. And that, I think it was demonstrated a lot in, it actually reflected a lot of the comments that I know I've heard from the various people during the hunting season. We had a little bit of that discussion before, but about quality of hunt, poor over congestion in many areas. People going out, getting disgusted with the process, shooting the first thing they saw because it was overcrowded, just to go home. And there's still a lot of that out there, and I believe that was demonstrated by several of these emails, ones I read, plus others, which you, I believe you got at least most of, that we really could be degraded the quality of the experience last year by those high quotas. This year, it's a similar quota to last year. It's slightly <coughs> down in some areas. <coughs> we'll we'll get, in, get in some more of that. But when it comes to the individual units, as far as specifically the quotas on the resident junior tags, I don't think we need to raise up any of our what the department recommends at all. We're at this point looking at what's going on last year, the increased number of applicants. We're still going to have, if I had to make a wild guess, and maybe Mr. Cox is a little better, we're still going to have at least 400 tags left over after the draw, if we go with what they have after the first draw. And it'll probably be a couple hundred tags that aren't sold, give or take, with, with the way it is. So we're going to get plenty of opportunity with the way it, even with the way it is now. And you can even uh, decrease this quota by a couple hundred. And say it's still still in the cell at all the tags. So thanks. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Yeah. Yes. All right. So um, I've got some more information. Let's do it. Before I get into the uh, here, Eastern Persian County and. The area 15 situation that uh, we're looking at for our doe hunts. Last year, we came in and told you that we've been carrying uh, the highest population over the last for, for several years, uh, which is 
why um, this, this coin class uh, was, was very high over the last few years. And uh, we said, you know, it's, it's really time that we, we get down a little, we get two thirty bucks per hundred in many of our units. And, uh, it's not, if you're in the can stockpile bucks, and sometimes can live in winters, but um, nobody can predict that. So we had good recruitment on top of a lot of these bucks. And we said, hey, let's go on. Let's get some people out. And I want to thank you for supporting those tag quarters. And there's a lot of data out there that we, that we maybe say otherwise to what some of these experiences were by our hunters. Uh, one of the, and we weren't baffled to tell you last year that the coin class was like the only one. When you flood the market with a bunch of yearlings, and you've got opportunity hunters who haven't gone a tag for three, four years, they're pumped, they're excited, there's going to be some yearling bucks killed. We knew that, and sure enough, there was. And that's why we, you see that 5% that drop from 42 to 37. Uh, large number of yearling bucks, obviously. What really, I think, validated the, the bucks uh, and the population size is that we were estimating last year was the sheer fact of the hunter success last year and I'm just going to use the resident rifle deer hunt, 1331 is my barometer. 42% hunter success, whereas the year before, we were, we were extremely conservative. We only had 38% success. Um, and so, for the most part, in most unit groups, the deer were there. People took advantage of them. And so, so for our big unit groups, six, seven, ten, a few others, that we had sizable increases to try to bring our buck ratio down to 30. Uh, we met our objectives. And some of those unit groups, um, they had uh, equal, if not slightly better, hunter success over the long term. There is six. 46% uh, in the early, 79% late. With 38% four point or better in the early, 75 in the late. Six was really pretty, pretty phenomenal. 39% hunter success in the early, uh, and uh, 10. You know, we, we've in the past years, uh, it's always been in the low 20s, typically in the early season. And uh, so even though the point class wasn't great at the end, six, six and seven, we saw uh, main maintenance of the four point or better, and equal if not increased hunter success. And I know we have reports of people coming in to provide samples uh, for CWD, and a lot of these people were just absolutely tickled pink. They had an opportunity to make a shot at the year. And uh, they were going to go home with stories and, and uh, meet the freezer. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking for a, a 220 buck, um, we may have taken uh, our share of the four, five, six year olds, but the deer were there, and we're not, we're not sorry that we didn't see that increase uh, because that's what happens with these underwriters, they fluctuate. There. Now, we came in, we did our surveys. Uh, I'm not sure if we completed the breeding stock. We, we increased our sample size by uh, almost 6,000 deer in the fall. We classified almost 34,000 mule deer. And then um, in the spring, we increased uh, and saw 8,000 more deer than we did two years ago and classified uh, over. 33,000 years in the spring survey. Unfortunately, uh, 
because of uh, lack of moisture last year, we, we saw a lower farm ratio. So, which, uh, you know, we just can't put back to back farm recruitment years together. So, we knew, we took advantage of it. Now, some of these big herds that didn't have the recruitment they had two years ago, now we're ready to reduce the quota because we don't have that recruitment. Um, and so I stated in our explanation sheet that for the most part, uh, quotas were adjusted to accommodate the 2013 recruitment and the variations in the hunter success from last year in the demand. So for unit groups where uh, the 2012 quotas were drastically reduced, we're still seeing a sizable quota this year. We still have a high buck ratio. Um, so for that large si sample size last year, uh, last fall, we again got a 32 buck per 100 mil ratio last year. And that's after having uh, you know, an 85% increase in, in harvest. Still, as we did two years ago, came in after classifying almost 34,000 mil meters, still with a buck ratio of 32 bucks per meter. Yeah, we could debate the age structure of that, but there's, there's a lot of bucks out there still. So, for the large unit groups that saw a reduction in the fawn recruitment, we are seeing uh, tag, we're asking for tag reductions. Area 6, we're looking at our recommendations of 20% reduction in the quota because of recruitment down and because we got our buck ratio down to 30. Uh, area 7, we're looking at a 40% reduction. Uh, the hard, hunter success exceeded our expectations last year in 7. And then in 10, we're reducing our uh, area 10 rifle tags to 20%. And there was a snafu another miscommunication between me and the Eastern region. So those published recommendations for 10 are uh, higher than, than what we would want to get to that. But for those units that we, we didn't have a lot of harvest, we, we continue to see buck ratios in the 40s. We're coming in with, with uh, a sizable 40 increases from last year's tag. So I wanted to um, briefly talk about the doe hunts and why we're recommending uh, sizable doe hunts in Eastern Persian County, 043, 46, and in Area 15. Just have two graphs and, and two maps showing the fires that have occurred. This map is the fawn ratios of the, the circles are uh, 043, 046, their spring fawn ratios. The green is the area 15 spring fawn ratios. And the triangles are the statewide average. As you can see, really, since 2001, 2002, 043 has been outperforming. Our, uh, our statewide average, uh, to, to our amazement. Um, they, they continue to do things that, that uh, most other herds have not been doing. Uh, it hasn't been until about 2008 that the Area 15 deer herd, their farm ratio started skyrocketing up um, well above the statewide average. And then all of a sudden, uh, bam, which is probably not a surprise for the people who've seen the, the ground conditions and the vegetative conditions in eastern Persian County in Area 15, horrible. Uh, their their fawn ratio has dropped like a rock. And uh, since the, that mule deer research that uh, Tony, our director, has been leading with the PhD student from UNR, in Area 15, um, we've 
marked 68 adults and 90 farms. Last year, we, we were hit hard by fawn loss. 60% uh, of the marked fawns died. Um, and actually, this level was uh, supported by our, by our postseason surveys of production and our spring surveys with recruitment. I really think uh, we also had uh, attention had to uh, five, 500 to 1,000 animals uh, died, uh, including adults in Area 15. So we really, the point I'm trying to make is uh, I think we may have had both of these herds overshoot their carrying capacity. This is a graph of the population estimate. Uh, again, at 043 is the orange circles, the green squares is area 15. This line is based on our data and based on what the deer herd is telling us in their response. They, they, they tried to get back up to this level uh, just shy of 3,000, uh, which we're kind of surprised that they've done that because uh, I'm going to move forward here. There's been a ton of fires since 2000 that has done uh, a lot of damage to the Mountain Brush community in the eastern Persian County units, uh, Area 15, and then Area 5 to the north, Area 6. So, along with this line that is giving us what we think is an indication of uh, the long-term carrying capacity, including what we think is uh, what that herd should not be above, it overshot that um, with that production, mild winters. And if we look at 15, it was going so fast, we, we think that, again, if you look at some of the, the peaks and the troughs and uh, in the last 20 years, we think that herd may be looking at about 3,500 uh, population estimate that we should be considering as, as the top end. Very similar to what we, how we've been treating Area 6 for a long, long time, it's lost 90% of its winter range. So we think 15 may have uh, uh, have overshot its, its herd. Uh, you can see it probably overshot it worse than, than 34. And that's why we're coming in with, even with the losses that we've had, sizable doe quarters in 15. And we think if we're not, we don't be responsible this year with the area four population, uh, it could succumb to uh, higher non-harvest mortality and, and, and drive itself down below its potential uh, top end of its habitat carrying capacity, especially if this drought persists. All right, so I'm ready to go back into the quotas unless you've got questions on that information. Any questions? If I may apologize, but I got to be here for it. Was that? 
machine come on up. Shane Moore, White Wayne County Cab. I guess my question for you guys is, um, ours is a whole problem with Area 22. And just to address the youth hunt, I, I don't know. We chose to keep every quote at last year's level. I can go to a detailed explanation of why right now. The least palatable, I guess, decrease from the from Endow's recommendations on our part is the youth hunt. But, so I can explain the whole thing now, or we can do it during the, during the rifle hunt, or? Explain it all now, if it pertains to all, we have to get to the gears and gears. Right? Right? No. We don't care what kills it. Um, the population estimates for 22 over the last 10 years of average 4,600 gear. The population estimate this year is 4,300 gear. The buck to doe ratios, uh, the buck to doe ratios, the 10 year average is 35 per 100. This year, the estimate's 37. Um, the fawn ratios go from 38 to 42 every single year, but our population, we aren't growing any year in area 22. And it's a huge concern of ours. With, but with fawn ratios of 42 per 100 this year, we can't figure out why we can't go any deer. So we go back and we look at, um, say, 05, for instance, where we're showing a buck to doe ratio of 31 per 100 and a population estimate of 4,100, and we've got 300 tags. This year, granted, we have uh, 37 per 100, but we're showing what is it, 850, 802 total quota on the rifle then. That's a two and a half times in increase in rifle deer tags. So we look at that and we don't understand the whole array here and how it's working out. So our choice is to maintain, and we don't have access to a computer of the array during our meetings, so we're looking at all these past years and we're saying, okay, we want to hold all of last year's quotas, uh, all of this year's quotas at last year's levels until we can figure out what's going on. That included the junior hunt. Like I say, it is the least palatable of all the hunts to decrease from Mandel's recommendations this year. Thank you. And I see you, Mr. Cox, for your Say your something now, please. You know, when tags are set, versus what we recommend, who knows why the tag was set, what it was a decade ago. Um, we have to go back. So, yeah, I mean, 300 tags, I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree that's what it was. Why, who knows. Uh, what's happening with the deer herd, I, I don't know. I, I do know that there's a healthy buck segment to that herd. And that's what we're addressing today. sit down with Mike Scott and others to try to see what we can do to improve the performance in every point of the day. But we're just looking at, you know, buck harvest today, primarily. When you see a high buck ratio, we always know that, that um, the expectations are higher in Wayne County, like Wayne County, if you look nicer bug quality, and we don't disagree with that, and appreciate that, but we just have a difference in opinion, so. Okay. You're at 37 bucks per hundred dose? Last fall, after the season. Okay, you don't want to back up. If, if, <coughs> what is your target machine bucks per hundred dose? I mean, 37 is still a high number. And so, you know, I see you that want to reduce tags, but if we, if, my understanding is if we don't stay there, we're going to start going to 40 again in some of these units, and, and we're losing opportunity for 100 at that point, too, when we start getting into that, measurement like that. And one uh, point 
Yeah, we're looking at standard at a 37 right now, 36, 37 range. And so we're looking at, you know, you look at the 10-year average in, in area 22, and it's went anywhere from 31 to 40 has been the buck bill ratio levels postseason that they've had observed levels. Um, and we're looking at standard 30, 36, 37 until we see what's, what else is going on. And that's, some of the other things going on there are a topic for other discussion. But. Anybody else have any questions? Commissioner Rain. Um, I think one thing I know that's come out in previous years with these specific units and uh, sometimes from other boards and other places, we've had certain uh, advisory boards and groups that have come to the thought, brought to the board that in their areas, they would like to see it a little more of the qualitative versus the quantitative, right? A few less tags, a little better quality, and to try and to utilize their areas as the a model, shall we say, for um, having a little higher buck ratios to get those bigger deer, but not necessarily have this whole state. And I think that's been fairly consistent with these uh, groups over the years. We've had a lot of input that, hey, they want to be pretty conservative, more so than others. If nothing else, I think it's been put in the past as a sample, as a demonstration. If they can keep the quality up, this type of quality you can get if you keep a ratio that's pretty high. I think that's kind of come forward over the years. And, you know, the commission at times has uh, respected that, and the commission at times has not respected that. I would like to respect uh, their wishes in this matter. So it makes quite a bit of sense. I'd like to make a comment on what Mr. McBeth. What I see we had to do last year was a result of this type of action year over year over year. It seemed like we got a percentage creep, percentage creep, a percentage creep until you start getting over 40 bucks per hundred because you keep cutting tags and they'll make some recommendations. We cut a few tags, you go up a couple percent in buck bill ratio. Then the next year the same thing happens, same thing happens, same thing happens. We lose now a hundred opportunity and uh, we get this creek that then all of a sudden you take care of and you have years like last year. I want to get to a middle ground where we don't creep, creep, creep and then have to get it down and start that creep process over again. Okay, I, I generally agree with everything that the chairman just stated, but I think what we have to remember, first of all, this is my backyard. Uh, and uh, there are uh, three wilderness areas in the 221, 222. You've got the Mount Grafton wilderness area, you've got the South Eagle wilderness area, and you've got the far South Eagle wilderness area. What happens is, is that you uh, you start giving out more tags and you're not covering the entire unit. What you're doing is, is you're, you're putting all of those hunters, dumping them all into the remaining country and you're, you're following your hunt tanks. That's what's happening. So I, you know, it, it, it's great to talk about, uh, you know, increasing tags for hunter opportunity, but when you put it on the landscape and you can use these two units, I, it just doesn't work. And so I think you have to take that into account. You have to take into account um, the available country that's there to hunt and, uh, and the, uh, the result of quality for putting too many tags out of there. Any other commission comment? Any other commission comment? Come on up. Uh, for the record, Paul Dixon, Clark, comment. Uh, a 
question to the commissioner, or actually to, to Mike, is that if you have high buck to doe ratios, if you have really good fawn improvement, do fawn's survivability go down with higher buck to doe over a winter because you have uh, yearling plus bucks that outcompete fawns going through the system? So that actually leads to you could have good recruitment in the spring. But if you carry a high buck to go ratio in the winter, basically you see no growth in the herd is what, from my understanding of the science is, I just wanted to make sure that that's not a mistake, because that's what I told my cat. Tony Wassley for the record. Um, there's a whole lot of issues here to discuss, and we throw the term quality around. I don't know if we're talking about quality of the experience or quality of the animal. Specific to the quality of the animal, um, We looked at a number of uh, entrants in the record book. We looked at average score. We looked at max score, all as a function of buck ratios. And we see no improvement in any of those areas. Um, we talked about the quality of the experience under congestion, and then we're putting things into the, the social realm. So I guess that's, that's why you guys are up here. Um, specific to your question, uh, anecdotally, um, Colorado has observed the same thing that we've seen in Nevada, which is an inverse relationship between recruitment and buck ratio. So as buck ratios have continued to increase, recruitment has, has gone down. Anecdotally, um, it's believed that there is a competition mechanism occurring on winter range where carrying so many more bucks, those bucks have outcompeted uh, the farms. Um, I'd say it's speculative, um, it's anecdotal. We see those same relationships, and in the areas where um, we have the biggest decreases in recruitment, we also have the largest gains in, in buck ratios through time. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay. Well, it does. And I guess it's a point that I want to make sure that we're considering all this. And at some level, until we get that fit, our ability to do effective recruitment and, and grow healthy herds, I mean, why we have doe harvests and why we do other things is trying to get a healthy herd based on the environment that we have right now. And if hunter experience isn't the greatest, but you're getting to an objective where you can get back to a healthy herd and have something that's moving forward under our current drought conditions, to me, that is much more important. And you have to take into consideration things like Commissioner McBath and Commissioner Rain said, but those are social things when we're trying to grow healthy herds. We learned, I heard for the last four years, it was predators. Guys. It's all predators reasons. I mean, be honest with you, we're looking at something different here. We need to use the science and can listen to biologists and can move forward with this. And like people said, if they get off their, their quads and their trucks and, their, and, their, and the trails in the valley and hike into the wilderness areas, you can have the experience you want. That's what hunting is doing. If hunting is driving around your truck glassy and shooting in your window, then you've got a different experience than I do. Thank you. Thank you. For Record, Corey Lavin, Lincoln Cab. If I talk in circles, Mike's going to kick me. So. Uh, I don't want to get too uh, drawn up in this either. We, we need to get moving forward with this. First thing I'm going to say is on the youth hunts. Uh, the numbers we recommended for, for 221, 223 were the same. Um, that was more or less just a, a fault in our system. We just, so we left it at 196. In 231, uh, that's a result of us throwing out a post cut target of 32 um, on the buck to doe ratio, as, as is the 241 to 245. Last year, <clears throat> nobody will remember, but we were shooting for 37 on those as post cut. And we actually hit that in, in 221, 223. And then we, we were slowly moving forward. I, I kind of hope that we, we get that. I don't, I'm not sure if we'll get there or not. Slowly going on those, those progressions. Um, Back to the youth, uh, the, the least palatable to do is to try to cut those youth youth tags. So uh, I'm not as concerned about the youth tags as I am about the other ones. Um, do you mind if I jump into the 1331? Um, there again, we, we threw it into the array, uh, shoot for a post town pocket kill ratio of 32. We believe in 221 and 223. We, we split the unit and, or split the season into three seasons now. You see the 65, 30, and 5 percent splits. Our recommendations of 466, 215, and 36 are just a reflection of trying to shoot to that 32 
uh, bark to bill ratio. Um, that's as simple as it is. It's basically a 10% decrease from what I was recommending, but it's an 18% increase of what we had last year. And so we're, we're there, and we do realize the recruitments and, and the numbers that are coming. We, we crunch these numbers left and right. And so with these guys' as help, and we're, we're constantly going back and forth on ideas. I'm thinking if, if we can meet a middle ground somewhere in, in 221 this year, 223, uh, with the split seasons being how they are, maybe we can maybe we can start to see a you know something that, can, that we can work with. Um, you want me to keep going? You're there. 231. Uh, that's a reflection of shooting after that 32 per 100 post hunt ratio, as is 241 to 245. Uh, we don't think the the post hunt count on that was was as accurate as it could have been, according to our biologist, um, in 231. I, I'm not sure how that 167 is going to work out. Uh, so what we did do is we didn't adjust numbers in 231. Now, I hate to confuse anybody anymore on the muzzleloader and the archery hunts. We actually asked for an increase on the archery hunts in 231. Um, I, I can keep going, but it, it just seems like we, we go round and round and pretty soon hours go by. Basically, our recommendations are shooting for the post time 32 to 100, and they're all reflected of that minus any little adjustments we made on the archery or the muzzle I'll, I'll leave it open for questions. Any questions in court? All right. Oh, I just want to know a quick one. Uh, any uh, uh, Lincoln County's uh, coming in at uh, 221, 223, you really uh, uh, lower than the white county. Okay, tell me that again. I didn't hear it. That's why ours were high. White pines were lower. I mean, yeah.
some of the conversation I've heard, if we then go with this county advisory board recommendation on the illegal weapon that's going forward, we might start exceeding that 25% in some units. So I just wanted that recognized that that may occur, but uh, we'll take a vote on it and see where it goes. Any other commission comment? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Seven one. Let's go. That's going to get more interesting. <laughs> you want to go and consider the floor? 